This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here in London. It's the media day for Better Behave Bivo, October 12th. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Jack Massey. Um, Jack, first of all, how are you, mate? It's been 48 hours of pure media, but I'm, I'm assuming very excited for what is only, what, two weeks away now? Yeah, really excited. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been a good, good experience down here alone. Um, you know, being at a press conference yesterday, um, you know, just Bivo just sat behind me and, you know, being on such a stacked, great undercard and massive, massive fight myself, world, world title against the, the top guy in the cruiserweight division, so it doesn't get any bigger for, uh, for myself. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's been good, exciting, but ready to go home after this one. Though. <laughs> this must be mad though, coming from your journey from only June to October, taking the Isaac Chamberlain fight on relatively short notice and kind of proving your worth as a man that will step in with anyone, no matter what the call, always stand ready to beating him, then to getting this opportunity days before your wedding, and once again, taking it with both hands. It, it must be surreal. Definitely. It's, uh, it was one of them when it was when it was dead set. It was one of them. Uh, it's, it took a few days just to properly sink in. Um, yeah, it was, it's, it's a funny one. It's you know it's it's one of them, it's it's what you dream about since I started boxing at the age of eleven you know winning the world to fight for a world title winning the world title, um so yeah it's, it just took a while to sink in it's it is very very surreal and still is you know yesterday at the press conference you know with people like Bivol sat behind me and better be behind me and you know being on such a massive massive card. Look, Joe Pattaya is seen and widely regarded as the number one in the division. I know people are talking about the Chris Bill and Smith Zerto winner fighting Jarpa Tire. But you're not to be slept on at all, are you? Never am. No. It's um you know, people are looking past me. You know, people think I'm it's it's he's he's gonna get me out of there in four, six, whatever rounds. It's it's not gonna happen. It's it's um you know, I'm 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 here for I'm not just here for the payday. I'm not here to to take a knee and 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 pull out the fight and and get paid. It's not about that for me. It's it's about winning this world title. That's what I've always dreamt about, and it's making. You know, it's it's setting my family up as well. That's that's what it's all about now, as well. So I've got a little little girl at home, and I've got married five weeks ago, and it's about you know securing my family. Is Opatai number one in the division, in your opinion? I think so, yeah. Yeah. He's, um, you know, people can he's, he's for Breeders, and I know a lot of people say, like myself, Breeders are sort of over the hill. Um, but you can see when he fights, he's, he's, he's very skillful, he's, he's a very good fighter. But I believe I'm a, I'm a better fighter. In just over 12 months since last September, obviously Opatai went Jordan Thompson, Ellis Zorro. Bradis, but those first two fights in particular against Brits was particularly dominant, particularly destructive. But then in his last fight, we see maybe a little bit of an immortal side from him, a uh, mortal side. So do you take confidence from what you see in the Bradis fight rather than the two fights that preceded that? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think I'm levels above your Thompsons and your Zoros, you know. These guys, uh, did, they've not really had the experience what I've had. Um, you know, I'm not sure on Zoro's amateur credentials, but I know Jordan Thompson. You know, he had a few white collar fights and then turned over uh, quite late. So he's he's sort of like missing out on the on that side of things. And Zoro, I'm not too sure what he's he's done. Um, but you know, I've been doing this a long, a long, long time, and I've got the experience, and I think that's what people aren't aren't really looking into. Um, but yeah, the breeders, breeders fights both of them. Um, first one, you know, he he won the fight and he won it with a broken jaw. You know, it shows that he's very, very tough. Second one, asked a few questions of him. Um, things we'll be looking at going into my fight, and yeah, just 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 showed a few little little things in that that last fight. Is there a danger on upper tire side that he may look at you as another Brit and think? that he can get you out of there like he did the previous two opponents? Yeah, we'll see on fight night. Um, seeing him downstairs before when we did the head-to-head -head, um, and we had a talk at the table. No, I don't think he's looking past me. I don't think he is. I, I, I think he's uh, too smart for that. 
too smart. So, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see on fight night. I know he's training hard. Um, you know, he's, he's doing a lot of sparring and this and that. So, we'll, we'll see. I know yesterday you was in and around kind of royalty and everything. You, you must pinch yourself. Like, when you see where you was, not even, what, four years ago to now, it, it's levels, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, and you get that a uh, little bit of imposter syndrome sometimes. Like yesterday, uh, I went and met, you know, Turkey Al Sheikh over at, uh, where he's staying, and I walked into the room with, with Joe and Mo, and um, yeah, it's it's surreal. Like, they pulled me a seat out, and I thought I was just going to sit there and just be a little bit of a fly on the wall and not really really talk. And uh, AJ stood up, come over, and shook me hand. I didn't even know he was coming over to me at first. He was like, "Oh, how's it going, big man? This and that." And uh, you know, looking forward to your fight. I had a good chat with uh, Eddie as well, and he was saying, oh, blah, 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 you're going to move up to heavyweight and this and that. I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I had a good good chat with uh, with the main man himself as well. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah very surreal. And, yeah, like you say, you've, you've, you've got to pinch yourself sometimes and, uh, and tell yourself, like, you know, you're here for a reason. You've worked hard, um, and this is this is where you belong. On October 13th, the day after the fight, is it going to be you who's keeping an eye out who wins out of Zerdo and Chris Williams me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to that one as well. Um, you know, a good fight. And that's a fight what I've, I've you know, been chasing. I've, I was sat with Chris yesterday, you know, having some food with, with the boxer team. And, you know, we've both got respect for each other. But at the end of the day, it's a business. This is what we do. We fight. And um, that's, that's a fight I've been chasing for a while. And, I think it makes a great, great fight and it excites me to be in good fights and, and, and tasty fights for, for, for boxing fans. Um, that's what gets me going and I believe me and Dylan Smith will be a, be a great fight. Last one, what happens October 12th when you do attempt greatness for that IBF Cruiserweight World title? Jack Massey brings that belt home. Excellent, Jack. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, you, mate. Good luck with the rest of camp and we'll see you in Saudi Arabia. Thank you very much, mate.